Okay, hello friends and followers. So by fooling around with this Tentec Paragon, I have found another way to seek face lock loop lockup. So I'm having trouble with 40 meters here, but I found that you can put a meter in the AC mode. So now, because this is giving a series of pulses to the CPU chip on this one pin here. So you can measure pulses on AC on a meter. So I'm on AC mode now on this meter. And I'm on this pin right here. So note these pins. One of these pins is, is 10.5 or something. One's 13.8. And that pin right there is the uh, lock, face lock, loop lock, pulse pin. When that is not locked, it'll put out a number of pulses. It's probably the reference pulses, and when the microprocessor counts too many pulses off that pin, it'll say, I am out of a lock. Anyway, I'm measuring that on AC now, and what you can see is I have uh, roughly 1.3 volts AC coming off that pin, and I'm out of lock on 29.9. So with that information, you can try and dial this value down into it locks. And so you can fool around with these coils, meaning you can turn the slugs or whatever you want to do to get that number as low as possible on the band that you're working on, on the range you're working on. And once you do that, you'll find this number will sink. So in this case, I'm working on the 10 meter band, and I know that this thing wants more inductance. So I'm not sure why it does, but at any rate, watch what happens when I'm diddling around here, and I'm going to move that little screw down for more inductance, and see how the number is changing. And now it's gone to zero, no pulses, so it's in reference. And you'll see for sure that we're right there in reference. So that's fine. That's how to do that. That's how you can use a meter to figure out where you are with these coils and sync them, okay? To face lock loop them. All right, so I've been dealing with 40 meters. That's been a real pain in the you know what. So I still can't sync 40 to save my life, but there's 40. You can see that the 40 meter oscillator, which is this one here, it's around 82 megahertz and when I turn the via bow knob, it's moving up and down like it should, but not not gracefully. So you can see it's not uh, It's not moving gracefully. Now, when I go down below 7.0, down to 6.9 or something, we're now using the oscillator that works. And you can see that if I just turn this back and forth, it's very, very nice on that oscillator. And I'm locked. So there I'm locked on this VCO on this one I'm not locked so when I go now to seven you'll see that I'll get a little flip when it flips the oscillators see the flip and I'm not quite on seven here and I'm wondering is that an issue that I'm not quite on seven I don't think it matters but Or I'm not quite on 82, I'm sorry. So I thought it was supposed to go on 82 exactly. So how can I fix that? And would that be the issue? I doubt it. I had this working almost perfectly a couple days ago until I put a drill to it. But anyway, beside that mistake, when I'm now on this oscillator and I try to move in a linear fashion, it won't really 
it won't respect my turns. It won't exactly jive with what I'm doing. Although it seems better right now, and it usually is. Okay, yeah, I'm turning up. It's kind of jumping. So what that tells me is the charge pump is trying to do its thing, and the oscillator is just not completely working correctly. And you can see that the value for it is rather high. So if I attempt to lower that by putting some inductance in, Um, it will really lower a whole lot. It'll it'll attempt to lower, but then it will go up. So that lets me think that at least this coil is close to where it should be with the inductance in it. Just a drill bit. Okay, so I'm inserting the coil. You can see that it's going down, which is good. Less errors. But I can't get it down a whole lot. And then I start going back up. So that sort of tells me that it's as good as it's going to get there. But that's not good enough. Still getting lots of errors. Anyway, pulling out, going in, going down. So I'm kind of doing this right just like that with it. Not moving it a whole lot. And those are the errors I'm getting. So it would sink if I could go lower. Okay, what if I raise the frequency just to where it almost works? Let's see. I think if I go up to around 7.4 or 5, it'll work. It'll sink. So that oscillator wants to be around 82 megahertz, and it just doesn't like to sink there. Let's raise it up till it sinks. And you'll see this voltage is going lower because it's getting toward almost working. So this count, air count, is going down. Okay, so we got four, and now it's synced. So when it's synced, it should be zero airs. And it's still got some errors, but it's close. Okay, so what if I try to uh, enhance it with this drill bit to see what it will do? Ah, the errors go down. Yeah, they really go down. And then they go up, so it's just like before. And what if we go all the way up to, okay, it's sink there. If I go higher, 7.5, and so it's way up in sinking territory. Ah, uh, meter turned off. Okay, there I don't show any errors at all. And if I insert this guy into here now, you would think it would make some errors, but let's see what it does here. Yeah, it doesn't make any errors. It doesn't affect, it's locked well. There, now it unlocked. Once I go way in there. So I would think to go lower in frequency, it wants more inductance, but hard to say. Anyway, this will help you uh, tune your coils for lock. Just put an AC voltmeter on that pin right there, or on the minor loop board, or major, what doesn't matter. Just get the correct pin there and go to AC. And then you can dial your coils in for the smallest AC value, which is the smallest pulse count, and you're on your way to health. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.